I mean, the difference between singers and instrumentalists, have you given that some thought? I mean, unfortunately, there's the issue, you know, it's singers and musicians sometimes. This is, we do not want to encourage that. I mean, that is simply not fair. Singers are also musicians. So if anybody ever tries to separate you from being a musician, you knock them down. Um, <laughs> and, but what, what are the things that are different about our task and our, as compared to instrumentalists? We can't push buttons. We, we have no automatiche. We have no automatic. We have no fingerings. We have no, we, we don't have to learn bowing techniques. I mean, well, we have, everything we do is from the inside. We have nothing outside to observe and, well, except what we do with our mouths, I guess, and posture and stuff like that. Um, so we're, as a result of that, possibly more dependent on outside ears. We don't hear our sound maybe as well as, as flutists, pianists. Um, we don't have to buy an extra ticket on the airplane, the way cellists do. I mean, there, there are lots of advantages. Uh, however, our health uh, can be a I mean, we have to stay in good health. Uh, we can't do a concert necessarily if we have a fever and, you know, again, because it's just, everything gets affected. Um, what are some of the musical advantages that we have? I mean, we're dealing with texts. We get, we, I think it's fair to say that voices, well, first of all, no soprano sounds like any other soprano. Generally, a clarinet will sound like a clarinet played by lots of different people. Same with all the instruments. You hear somebody's individual touch uh, in instrumentalists in a, in a different way. And very often, actually, with singers, I mean, this can be some, it's very subjective how you are listened to. And it can be that, you open your mouth and somebody might just think it's the most awful sound. Somebody else might think it was ravishing because it's a very, it's so much more subjective. That's interesting. Uh, I mean, it means that we have to be, we work with our own idea of what's beautiful, what we're trying to do, and we have the people we trust who um, guide us in this. But you won't be liked by everybody. That's hard. We have a certain technical facility that I think instrumentalists don't have. What do you think that might be? <laughs> well, here we go. Row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. Merrily, 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 life is but a dream. Now, row. Row, row, row gently down the stream. Merrily, 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 life is but a What did we just do? What did we transpose? Do you know what the interval was? Anybody know what the interval was? It was actually, I thought I was doing a tritone. I mean, I didn't really. But, I mean, did we, didn't, did we put any thought into that? No. 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 How instrumentalists would, I mean, we don't even know what key we're in. Does anybody have perfect pitch here? Yay! Oh, whoops, Makiko, do you have perfect pitch? <laughs> that's all right. I do not have perfect pitch, and that's one reason why I, I mean, I've worked very hard and in learning how to deal with everything, and I've, I have theories that, I mean, perfect pitch people have a tremendous advantage, but they don't understand what an interval feels like. <laughs> and for expressive music making, uh, I mean, they don't need any context, so they're, they're not, they're just independent. They have to really develop their ear to listen in a more harmonic sense, I would say. So, your handy dandy um, tool kit, which you might have, is um, a metronome, a access to a keyboard, and um, Liz was telling me she's got one of these roll-up keyboards 
you've got a little one, uh, very handy to have around you. Red pencil and other colors if you want. A ruler can be helpful. Um, little white out if the, very often the text is so tiny that, at least at my age, I'm always wanting, and, and that's also a part of these Finale and Sibelius things. They, they don't seem to know how to, to enlarge. It's very hard to get big text in, according to people I've talked about. So that tape comes in several sizes. Uh, you might want a pitchfork or a pitch pipe. Uh, scissors are handy. Very often I have, no, not out, not to cut music out. <laughs> but I've, I've made, well, for Liz, we made a um, score that, where she could see more than, instead of four staves at a time, she could see six. And it, for my, the chin, the acrostic wordplay, I've made a complete vocal part because oddly enough, well, I, Unsuk Chin breaks measures at the end of a page. I mean, Babbitt does that too, but um, this is a, it's, it's terribly disturbing to have a th three beat measure with two beats over here, even when the, and one beat over here, and then sometimes over the page, one and then two. I, I, don't, I don't understand why that would happen. Um, except to be, make it more of a challenge. <laughs> All right, so first let's look at uh, Elena's piece. The large one is your basic pitch chart of uh, Elena's piece, and then this uh, Hungarian piece by Yeni, and then, right, do you have that? Yes. You're looking, and, and the Fedele. That's marked X. And the other side is Y with a bit of Tanya Leon's piece. 